Hi everyone, I've been asked to put together a short video about how to make a webinar. So I'm just going to go through the um, stages that I use uh, to create a webinar. So I use a system called GoToWebinar. There are different platforms out there and I'm looking at a few and they're on my list. But this is the one that I use and I find it by far one of the simplest and best ones that I've used. So basically it's free for 30 days. Um, I've got an account already. Um, and I'll just show you. So basically if you want to, oh, here it is, it's already logged me in. So um, I'm running a webinar tonight at Thursday. Uh, sorry, tonight at 8 o'clock about tax implications of people who have their own businesses. So basically, once you've got your um, webinar set up, all you have to do is go to schedule a webinar on the left there. And then either what you can do is you can choose one that you've used before as a template or you can just literally start afresh. Uh, Okay, and your title will just be whatever you want to call it. And then description, you know, just give people a bit of an idea of uh, what's involved in the webinar. Uh, one session is obviously just a one off and then you can, you know, schedule it every week, every day, whatever. Um, and then obviously you've got the date and you've got the time, so I'll just leave that as it is for now. Then you've got the time zone as well, so you know if you're based in the UK, you need this one, GMT, uh, GMT, uh, Dublin, Edinburgh, blah blah blah. Um, but obviously if you work in a different time zone, then make sure you've got the right time zone set. That is important because when the system notifies, notifies, sorry, <laughs> the people who are attending the webinar then obviously it will give them the time of the webinar in their time zone i know that's an obvious point but the amount of people who miss it you'd be surprised um and then once you've got that set up all you do is schedule and then basically it's got your webinar here um which will have all your details on all you have to do if you scroll down is copy this link and you can Click on copy webinar information if you want to copy all of it. Um, but what I tend to do is send people that link. Um, la, 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 la. Um, on the free version of this platform, there's up to 250 people who can attend. Um, you know, I think that's probably usually enough to get people going. And then um, once you start your webinar, so, you know, once it's the day, start it what will happen is once people click on this link by the way once you've sent them the link to register they will enter in their email address and they'll also enter in their name so what will happen I think it will send them a notification that they're registered then I think half an hour before the webinar it actually sends them a um, reminder that they've actually started the webinar's about to start, which is always really useful because obviously, you know, people forget, they register. Um, obviously, the other great thing about using a webinar is that you're capturing people's details. Um, so, you know, any email system you then use, any autoresponders, you can download those email addresses into your system, knowing that the people who have signed up, you know, these people that have signed up for the tax webinar, I know for a fact they're going to be interested in um, tax information about what I do so you know just pitch your webinar speaking directly to your audience now if you don't know what your audience needs or wants to help them in their businesses or in their jobs or whatever you're doing your webinar on then you need to ask them um, so you need to do some research so ask people you know and ask people you don't know as well that's what I always do just ask them if you can ask them a few questions about what is it in your current company that you need help with you know what keeps you awake at night what are the three things are your biggest struggles in um, the business that you're working with 
Okay, so that kind of gives you a bit of a background of what to ask and things like that. So once you've got your uh, webinar set up, what will happen is you'll see this. Okay, that's pretty self explanatory. I'll just show you a few of the um, functions. So, here under attendees, it will tell you who's attended. Once you've got people logged in as well, it will tell you whether they've muted. Um, whether they've got the hand up to ask a question. If they ask a question, there's a little box that appears up here with a question mark in, I think it is, or a speech bubble. And then you can click on it and you can just ask, answer their questions. You can actually unmute them as well. So, you know, if someone wants to speak or you've got a co-presenter or you've got someone who you just want to ask an opinion of and want to pitch in, then obviously you can, um, you can do that. Um, you can also do things like share your webcam. Um, I usually share my screen, which happens automatically when I start the broadcast. Um, what I also do as well, um, I usually have a set of notes or a set of slide or something that people can look at when they're um, listening to me. Now, I use PowerPoint to prepare the um, slides, and you know they're just standard slides. I can show you. Uh, an idea of what I use if you like um, but just a few key points so when you're preparing slides for a presentation don't put too many points on there because the whole point of a presentation is that you want people to listen to you it's really hard on a webinar to actually keep people engaged because most of the time what people will do is they'll have a webinar and then they'll carry on working in the background <laughs> so you know if you're then adding on, to, on top like lots of fussy uh, presentations, PowerPoint slides, then people will just switch off. Um, what I do when you're just about to start the broadcast, I start the broadcast and then I start recording. And once you've started recording, obviously it will record your voice and it will also record your screen as well. So what happens then, once you've then finished your webinar, what you can do is um, you can download that recording and I usually upload it to YouTube or upload it to a system called Mediafire. And then you can share that link via, you know, your autoresponder or whatever campaign um, process you use via email. You know, I would suggest that you capture those people and you follow up with them. You know, people always love a recording of stuff. Um, I tend to give recordings. I'm sure, I'm sure there's probably a rule because I've seen people not, not providing uh, recordings or recording providing a little recording for like a limited time you know so hurry this recording will only be available for the next 24 hours type of thing you know i guess it just spurs people into making the next action and i guess you know theories about webinars is that you want to give people information that's going to tempt them into the next thing um, either you want to get them to sign up to something or you want to get them just interested in you as a person or you as your brand or kind of like setting yourself out as the expert so it really depends what you want to do what i always do is work backwards so you know i work i'm like okay i need to get people signed up to this business okay how am i going to do that i'm going to have a webinar okay what am i going to talk about you know do it the other way around you know, think about what your end goal is first and then work backwards um that makes sense to me it might not make sense to you or other people but it certainly works for me so um that is go to webinar in a nutshell and uh, once you've done your recording by the way um, and you've ended your broadcast, so everyone's left, you know, you've left the webinar, it will come up here in my recordings. And then what will happen is, once you finish your webinar, it will automatically pop up whether you want to convert the recording. That's totally normal. Just click on convert. And then what it will do, it will save it as an MP4 file. Then what you want to do then is you want to convert that file 
um, into YouTube or you want to upload it to Mediafire, like I said. That sounds techy, but it really isn't. Um, if you need any help on that, give me a shout. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's, it's really, really simple. I really like it. It's never let me down. I've used other programs. I mean, I've used this program for team training. I've used it for paid webinars. I've used it for um, training for clients. So I've used it for lots and lots of different purposes and it's always worked well. I've never had a complaint of someone. Um, so it works well. So there you go. Hopefully that will be useful. Thank you.